Welcome to the Brothers Truck Parts Workshop. Well, we're here in the Brothers Truck Parts Workshop with Steve and Jim, and they're gonna help us. We've got a lot of projects. We're gonna have something new every week from Brothers Truck Parts. So what are we doing to this little so, 1500? This week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a drop spindle, disc brake upgrade with lowered coil springs. So it'll drop it about five inches, and um, we're gonna let these guys do it so we don't get our hands That's dirty. a great idea, let's go. We've got about 15 or 20 minutes into this project. I mean, we've got the caliper off, uh, we've taken the brake lines loose, we've got the dust cap, the castle nut, rotors off, dust shields off. And basically, uh, at this point, you want to clean up some of the grime. Loose, actually, we've already loosened the ball joints, so uh, our next step we're gonna be doing is taking the spring off here. Now, once in a while, this spring, depending on the, on the spring rate, sometimes the spring will actually fall right out of there. This time, if it is stuck like that, you wanna get a pry bar in there to kind of get a little more uh, leverage on it. That was simple, huh? A lot better than the sports cars we do these days. And the spring we're gonna replace it with is gonna be a lowered spring and have a, uh, a different spring rate to it and uh, just gonna perform a lot better. And as you can see, just in the, in the height of the spring itself, much lower spring, it's gonna lower the vehicle down. It also has a different spring uh, rate in it that's gonna give you a better ride quality, a little more uh, high performance. And then in the spindle, you can see how much higher the actual spindle is located compared to where it connects to the truck. It's pretty much five inches of coolness. And what you got here is a progressive spring race so that if you're ever going, having a spirited ride going around corners, it's gonna get stiffer as it bounces and as it works. And that's what the progressive rate in it is, is actually there for. Okay, right. let's put them on. Let's quit messing around and get to work. So now that we got our spring in, and the, and the lower spring is a lot easier to get inside. So you wanna make sure that you've got the bottom in its pocket. If you don't, it'll snap in place and it could be bad. And there's a top that also goes inside of a pocket so that the spring stays stationary. Then you can have a buddy do the jack, work the jack while you make sure the spring is in place. And then you can go ahead and put the knuckle back in place just like that. Okay. We've got our castle nuts in place for the spindle. We've got our cotter pins all installed. I'm putting on the sway bar while Jim puts on the shock. And before we know it, Jim, we're gonna be totally cool. Five inch drop, C-notch, flip axle in the rear. Take this sucker down to the beach and hang out, right? Absolutely. Better drive quality, better looking by far. What about the handling? Handling's gonna be great. We'd probably be better off taking this thing to the track instead of taking it to the beach. You guys can see that there was a damaged boot on there and while we had everything apart, we went ahead and replaced the boot because the joint looked fine. And this is a good time to inspect your tie rod end, your inner tie rod, and your drag leak link. Just in case you need something done, you can do it while the car is apart. Alrighty, there we go. We don't wanna crush the bushing. Very important. Now we're ready for the dust shield. Yes, sir, and you guys, do, us, do yourself a little favor. If you notice, we cleaned off almost 40 years, or should I say 42 years, of dirt and grime off of that backing plate. Now we can go ahead and reassemble it. Don't hog down on these. They're little bolts and you'll break them off. All right, so our next step is going to be to pack these bearings, brand new bearings, tapered roll bearings. You're going to want to be really generous. I got brand new gloves on. You don't want to use your gloves that you had the uh, dirt and grime from 40 why. years of all that. All right, now once you put the rotor on, you're gonna wanna put a nice big chunk of grease inside on the spindle here, inside a new rotor before you put this bearing in. It's just gonna slide right in just like that. Your washer. Now you put the washer on, it's got a slot in it, so you make sure you got it into that slot. You guys don't wanna hog down on this spindle nut. You want to go down, preload the bearings, make sure you're nice and tight with your hand. Get it to your position where you can put your cotter pin through, and you should be good to go by putting your dust cap on. All right, so now we got the uh, brake caliper back on. We've replaced, uh, put new brake hoses on. And once you get done with this whole project, you want to bleed your brake lines, make sure that uh, your brakes are working well before you get out on the road and, and try to road test this thing with no uh, with no fluid in the lines or air gaps in your lines. So now we're just tightening the caliper back on. We should be back on the road in no time. And we'll just snug these down nice and tight. There you go. Okay. Well, clean that rotor. And we did clean the back side of the rotor before we put it on. 
Not bad for 45 minutes in the garage, huh? Not bad at all.